Eric Darling here. Uh, still alive. Amazingly. Uh, still talking about SQL Server. Probably a little less amazingly. Uh, in this video, I want to talk a little bit about three functions that are in my GitHub repo uh, that don't get uh, enough, if, if any, attention whatsoever. Um, look, you know, look, look, I got a GitHub repo. Ooh, everyone has a GitHub repo. It's not anything crazy to have a GitHub repo. Most of what gets attention in my GitHub repo are the store procedures I write to help with SQL Server troubleshooting. Things like the stuff over here that starts with the SPs, like SP Health Parser and SP uh, Human Events and SP Log Hunter and SP Pressure Detector and SP Quicker, Quickie Store. There are a lot of SPs in there. Uh, these string functions uh, get very, very little uh, attention. And uh, it's, a, it's, it's sort of a shame because when I'm working with clients, I often see like really crappy versions of these uh, functions like copy and pasted from some website from the year 2000. Uh, inevitably scale our UDFs, every single one of them. Some of them multi-statement table valued functions, um, but like always like while loops and other crap that make your queries awful and hate you and slow and make you need to hire me. Maybe I shouldn't be talking about it. Yeah, keep, keep those queries slow. Call me. I'll, I'll do something. I'll wave my hands at them. Uh, but the, the three basic things that I see a lot of people trying to do in queries uh, a lot are, uh, has to do with like string manipulation. Microsoft has given us some, uh, some help with string manipulation lately, sort of. We got a string split and a string ag, and I don't know, I guess that's it. <laughs> you get what you pay for. It's only $7,000 a core. Why, why develop anything useful? Uh, apparently, we're getting regex. Uh, Azure SQL DB has regex in preview, which can only mean SQL Server V next is getting regex in preview. So, um, can't wait to start seeing regex in a where clause. To be honest with you, going to make the revive the entire SQL Server community having regex and where clause. <laughs> Everyone's coming back. Everyone's coming back. Right? Not a sinking ship at all. So uh, these are the, what the three functions do. Uh, they are called get letters, get numbers, and strip characters. Uh, they all do nearly the same thing. I'm going to talk about what's in these files a little bit before I show you the the stuff. So in every file, there's two versions of these. Uh, there's one version where you can use a numbers table, and the numbers table does help a little bit with performance. There's also another version that uses a common table expression to build up a sort of uh, internal numbers table uh, that looks like this, right? So there's a little bit more work in there. Uh, the numbers table is a bit faster. It's not, you know, depending on what you're doing, the, the, the speed difference is uh, somewhere between negligible and um, uh, profound. So, uh, you know, make sure that w whatever version of these you're using suits your use case appropriately. Uh, so what these things both do is, uh, this one is get letters. So what this does is it basically uh, uses that string splitting thing to do some XMLing, and what we do is look for uh, basically any single character in a string that matches the AZ AZ uh, uh, pattern, right? So that's all, all the you know characters between A and Z. Um, so that, that, that's what that does. Uh, if you need out weird characters, I don't know, write your own function. Uh, and then the, the get numbers function does just about the same thing, except it only looks for where uh, the single character is like zero to nine. The strip characters one is a little bit different because what this does is it seeks to remove uh, some, some matched expression from, from your strings. Right, so they, they all function slightly differently. Um, I think maybe, I mean, sort of theoretically, technically, strip characters could replace both get letters and get numbers, but um, I, I sometimes find that it is, it, is, it is helpful to write code that is geared towards a specific task. 
uh, the the more um, the more that your code might have to do, or like the more generalized your code is, sometimes the less efficient it is. Uh, overly generalized code, big, bulky, slow, lots of thinking, decision making, uh, things to check on. Uh, more focused, narrow casted code generally tends to be faster and work better. So with that out of the way, let's go over to Management Studio and let's just see a couple examples of these things working. So uh, this is the get numbers uh, function. And if I run this, uh, we'll see uh, a bunch of nulls where some usernames don't have numbers. And then for lines where the usernames do have numbers, we will only get the numbers from them. Things like 4614 without the user, right? So that's, that's, that's get numbers, which is pretty handy. Uh, get letters does the exact opposite of get numbers, where uh, when we get down to this batch of users, where there, there, there were numbers there at some point, uh, the numbers have been completely stripped out. All right. So fun stuff there. Uh, the strip characters one, well, like I said, there is a there is a solid case for strip characters replacing both <laughs> both of those uh, in different ways. But um, well, so like there are some weird there are some weird characters in some of these. It's a screwy Unicode thing. Uh, the results look a little weird sometimes with this. But if you look at uh, the, dis the, the display name column in the Stack Overflow database has some, has some very weird things in it. It's an invar car, and strange things happen. So, but we, when we want to uh, strip out characters, um, well, this is, this is the one where we, where, where we were removing numbers, and we can see the numbers get removed in here, like that. And for the one where we were looking to uh, do the opposite, which is one where we were trying to remove all that stuff. Uh, so <laughs> there's... Like I said, there are some strange things in here, but the, the important thing is that <laughs> for, these, for these rows, uh, we only get the numbers back from those. Uh, th for, for these, uh, I would have to like go through and like do like an ASCII or Unicode check to figure out exactly what is odd in here. But Tomek Melissa, I guarantee you, has some weird Unicode character somewhere in that name. Uh, we just... I, I just didn't really do all that much digging on it. So if you, if you have a need in your database to either, um, a lot of, I see a lot of this stuff with like phone numbers or you know, um, something, along, something along those lines. Uh, and it's usually pretty good for, these are pretty good for that stuff. Uh, they are inline table valued functions, so they don't have the same problems that scalar UDFs or multi-statement table valued functions would have. So if you want to give these a shot and see if they fit your use case, you know, I got get letters, I got get numbers, and I got strip characters, and they all do, you know, just exactly what they sound like. So you should try them. And if you, I don't know, like them or you find bugs or you find things that can be improved from a performance perspective, well, this is what GitHub is for. We collaborate. We're a community. We all high-five each other. No one gets paid. No one gets paid. All right, cool. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you'll try my, my handy little functions out. Uh, I hope you learned something. Uh, what else? If you like this video, I like thumbs. I love thumbs. Thumbs are the best. Comments are, comments are nice too. Uh, and I also like subscriptions, subscribers. I like when people say, I want to hear from you more often, Eric Darling. Uh, because, you know, that's how I make friends. <laughs> I yell at my camera on YouTube. So anyway, like, subscribe, hang out, spend some time with me. Mm -hmm. Try some functions out. They're free. The first, first function's free, kid. All right. Uh, thank you for watching.